sports fans, if you want to improve your jumping ability, check out Boing Bird's complete video system. For a limited time, you can access their incredible training videos for only $7, a savings of over $70. You win? Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. What an incredible first day of the NCAA tournament. I'm not going to really count what happened to play in games, so this is the first day for me. Uh, we've had more games decided by one point than we ever had in one day, and I am white. But I did want to go through this game, UAB's upset, because it was really exciting down the stretch. And I'd love to see Cinderella's win and get the respect that they deserve, because a lot of these conferences, these mid-majors, are a lot better than people think. And when you have guys that have played for two, three, and four years, they really learn the game. They can handle that kind of pressure. So, down the stretch, there were some key issues that we saw on Iowa State's issue, but mainly because they didn't play aggressively like that got them the lead in the first place. And that's the key we have to be careful about, especially in the tournament, is not playing to lose. you got to play to win and do what you did and do what got you there. And if you don't do that, that that's when the Cinderella start creeping up and might bite you in the butt. Up to with a minute and a half to go, Iowa State suffered from the playing not to lose syndrome. It started with a backcourt violation the refs missed and then continued through 26 more seconds of stagnation. There was very little player movement off the ball, but they were very passive and indecisive with every catch. And since they weren't in the bonus, it enabled UAB to be ultra aggressive without fear of putting them on the line. This bad possession culminated in a shot that didn't hit the rim and a shot clock violation. Now this got me really excited. On the baseline out of bounds play, watch how Robert Brown will set a screen first, then burst through the double screen which then slides together. That's right, it's the elevator play and it got them a nice clean look for the go ahead three which Brown drains. Here's yet another stagnant offensive set until their point guard finally had enough and just beats his man to the hoop. A running one-hander off one foot without using the backboard is a fantastically difficult shot and Morris comes through in the clutch. UAB goes to a simple high pick and roll and watch how the roll man sucks in the weak side defense. Now UAB has an opening to attack the closeout and William Lee gets to the elbow and calmly sinks a jumper when his man can't get a hand up. Down one, Iowa State needs Niang to create, but the spacing is bad and his two teammates being down by the hoop enable the perfect timing on the double team. They get the block shot and UAB recovers. However, look at the replay. There are no less than two blatant fouls that go uncalled. Can you hear me shaking my head? After two free throws, Iowa State has one last chance and they run a nice little play. A cross screen from the inbounder for Nas Long and notice how Hakeem Baxter fell asleep a little bit, then took a step backwards before accelerating. This all translated into a wide open look for an elite college shooter and it was a bit shocking to see him release this and miss. Rather than grab the board and shoot it one last time from three, Morris tips it in, effectively ending the game since they needed three points to tie. He should have at least tried to grab the rebound and kick it back out. There wasn't much you can do in .4 seconds. All UAB had to do was get the ball inbounds, and once the game clock expired, we had ourselves another major upset.